यार ये बार बार एक तो एडजस्ट करना पड़ता है इसको रख लू क्या किसी को रखेगा तो पैसा मांगेगा कोई भी काम के लिए पैसा मांगेगा हाँ जितना बोले उतना देंगे अब अंत तो Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are doing really well out there, having a great health. Welcome to another fresh episode of the series that we started in conversation with. And today we have someone really, really special. Someone who has a lot of experience in the field that we usually deal with. That is aviation, and uh, she has worked in numerous companies, uh, including one of the best airlines in the world, that is Emirates. And she'll be sharing her experience and what all knowledge that she gained in this field. And uh, To guy, to tell you guys a fun fact, she was the first female to join her department when she joined Emirates. So that is something really big, and we really appreciate that. And she'll be joining us. We have two other people with us. That is Anga and Chirag. My team members are with me, and we three are uh, we four of us are actually going to discuss on the topic aircraft maintenance engineering. That's what she has done. And to be really frank to you guys, I didn't know much about this field. I thought that you know doing aircraft maintenance engineering. uh required the same knowledge or uh, the same courses had to be done uh that we usually do in mechanical and aerospace engineering to go into this field as well but this is a completely different and a very unique engineering that i would say and many people don't know much about it so we thought you know we should actually let you guys know what this engineering is all about so she is going to join us today let me without wasting any time let me quickly join them Hi guys thank you so much for joining Megha everyone knows this is Anagha we have Chirag with us and we have Megha ma'am with us uh, and uh, she has given us a great opportunity to uh, interview her in terms of her uh, all the experience that she has actually uh, gained in so many years from the aircraft maintenance engineering so thank you so much Megha ma'am thank you so much for joining us and uh, okay then let's begin let's begin everything okay uh, hi Megha Can you just briefly tell us about aircraft maintenance engineering and what it's all about? Uh, as name says, it's about maintenance of aircraft, and uh, uh, this this is basically the license program. It's not a degree. It's a uh, it's it's a uh, most of the colleges it's it is considered as a diploma course, and. Um, you uh, what aircraft like in a in general aviation or in a scheduled airlines or i should better talk about scheduled airlines or non scheduled airlines uh, whichever wh- whatever aircraft is on the ground is always maintained like your cars and uh, they are scheduled for a level of checks like if 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 it is a scheduled airline the aircraft comes and goes in that meanwhile time of as per if it, if it is a domestic airline so if it they have a turnover time of half an hour or 25 minutes or 40 minutes or if it is it is an international airline with a bigger aircraft it goes for 2 hours or 3 hours of transit time so that transit time is considered as a line maintenance department who who deals with the maintenance of the aircraft in that tenure okay and that maintenance is basically when the aircraft comes if during the flight it has any snag came over then the engineers has to deal with those snags okay go through the uh, post flight report if any you know meanwhile any anything has happened right. do a walk around of the aircraft mm-hmm. and then uh, if it is all clear then aircraft is sent back for the departure again okay. so that is called the uh, line maintenance line department maintenance. that is the, uh, which is the lowest level of check okay Where so it comes uh, for the higher uh, level okay. yeah tell me Yeah, so, are there any number of like? Is there a list which a uh, engineer has to go through before the air car departs? Yes, of course. There is a list. Like, if uh, it is a transit, uh, if if we are talking about a transit uh, departure time only, then we have a walk around, which is the compulsory list. Like, what what a checklist a captain follows right. before a flight. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Same the same kind of checklist an engineer also follows. basically going through a walk around of the aircraft which which has a also a pattern of doing a walk around just not from the nose to tail right. that is also a, a pattern to do a walk around of the aircraft mm-hmm. and then in that walk around if they find anything missing anything you know wheels having cut or uh, any uh, 
any static wicks missing or something like that anything in the walk around if they find or if they find any bird it has happened in the during the flight that's the most common thing so if anything like like most common thing if there is dent you find so yeah, that order. walk around matters a lot yeah, due to a uh, bird hit there could be a blade damage uh, on the engines or uh, a dent on the wings you yeah. may you mean to say maybe a dent on the wings yeah. so that happens and anyways th- if something like this happens captain also get to know during the flight also right right that something has hit the aircraft so captain also reports there is a post defect report that is uh, there is a tech log maintained in the aircraft in which after every flight a captain has to maintain a record okay there is any defect or not okay maybe sometimes it happens that in the cabin during the flight something is like you know maybe a chimes is working or lights are flickering or something like that right. any those kind of defects is also found by the captains during the flight which is reported to the by the crew to them so uh, that is also um, uh, maintained and then ca- uh, engineers have to go through it and have to rectify and if there are some defects which they cannot rectify in the small tenure and which doesn't hampers the airworthiness of the aircraft for the next flight then they can also uh, defer uh, defer the defect got it as per the, there is a list maintained by the uh, authority like mm-hmm. suppose if you are in gulf uh, the, the gcaa gulf civil aviation authority has maintained a list of the things which uh, which they say that uh, it is uh, it is allowed to go or not with this defect mm-hmm. and the same in in india you have dgca director general of civil yes. aviation right so dgca dgca maintains in india so okay. this way in different uh, countries their own authorities are there right. uh, so this way it goes but that is a line maintenance which is the i must say a lowest level of check which has limited uh, things to do you have limited time to do little hush rushes there and whatever you can rectify is rectified otherwise it is deferred and then the snacks are taken care of when the aircraft is on the halt like base like uh, suppose yes. whole day aircraft Parked. is flying when in the night time suppose if aircraft is parked then those uh, snacks are taken care by the engineers okay so that is the daily service check uh, engineers are carrying out on uh, on 24 hours basis of an aircraft uh, regarding this line maintenance itself for example uh, a plane is there uh, in the like kind of uh, it's on the gate it's being you know uh it's it's having another flight in the next 30 minutes and the line um, right. maintenance actually finds out something uh, you know some kind of a snag that should be repaired immediately within a yes it will take for example so the go- flight is delayed it's delayed. or the flight is changed yes it's changed either if the company is good enough they have enough number of aircrafts right. they can change the flight right and ground that aircraft that is called okay. aog aircraft yeah. on ground suppose okay. if there is a bird hit which da- hampers the blade of the engine mm-hmm. aircraft cannot go mm-hmm. so Because that is a aog no, no they cannot take off for the next flight that will be aircraft on ground until or unless that blade would not be changed entire inspection is not done of the engine so it uh, because it's not just the bird hit on the blade it has gone inside the engine also no engine also. so many things have done yes. so the proper boro is also done like there is a boroscope in, uh, inspection that is also done after that maybe it could have hampered other things inside also That's so right. that is a long thing like aircraft will be on ground for minimum 2 days at least if the company is good enough to have everything with them all the spares and uh, everyone still it will take more than a day to uh, to rectify that snag so of course for the next flight it cannot go so it all depends on a situation to situation that yes uh, all yes. situational that what you might have to face after the landing of uh, next flight you might not know yes exactly And exactly so so for us for being uh, for engineers it is like every flight is a new experience every day is a new experience you will go you don't know that when we are going to work today what kind of snag you are going to uh, work on or what how what kind like, of difficulties we are going to face what kind of difficulty you are going to face exactly 
so okay. it's all up to ha huh. so this is all line maintenance it's like a giant pit crew of a aircraft that's correct right exactly okay with 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 um, i must say um, experience we learn how to tackle with the situations how to tackle with the snags fastly and smartly yeah. but uh, sometimes even the experience holders uh, fails right. in some new snags when we come over like you know corona virus right. <laughs> i started off with telling you the basic uh, yeah. of yeah. aircraft maintenance engineering which is like line maintenance which deals with a smaller level of check right. okay then comes a higher level of checks also so these Which are the ones that you know, like a schedule um, check like a schedule check that happens maybe within the, like yeah. maybe a couple of months or like something like that exactly like what you have in your car if it is driven for this many hours uh, sorry this many kilometers. Uh, kilometers. kilometers or this many years whichever comes earlier kind of happens right, right, in right. the car also same is with the aircraft when it is considered as how many hours it has flown Yeah. or this months this many months it has to cover and then this check happens okay so that uh, that is that is with the a check a check is is called a check for few months and hours then consider as a c check for a long mostly by 3 to uh, yeah 4 to 5 years after 4 to 5 years depending upon the company to company rules and regulations followed okay so these are the so it is uh, like that instead of the line check yeah now for them hangar is the requirement right suppose if it is a a check a check a aircraft is like you know the it's a it's a list of checks you have to take care of during that uh, level of check yeah. and that is carried out inside the hangar right and the c check is a major check mm-hmm. major check means the o- complete overhauling kind of uh, overhauling of the aircraft suppose of the seat of the car is taken out completely and the complete thing is same happens with the aircraft complete seats are taken out and in uh, like floorboard of the cargo sections is completely taken out walls so those are the uh, seat check which takes around 45 days of time depending upon the aircraft size also right correct so uh, maybe some aircraft 30 days small aircraft 30 days or bigger aircraft uh, uh, 380s goes up to 45 to 60 days also mm-hmm. depending upon the situation so that is complete overhauling of the aircraft and that aircraft uh, is uh, for 30 60 days whatever it's always inside the hangar to mm-hmm. work on that aircraft so considering this fact of uh, repairs that happen usually after months or years uh, when is like obviously it's it completely depends upon the uh, company as well that uh when is like you would say the uh it's kind of an initial thing that the aircraft is now at a you know a retirement stage so when is it when does that actually happen is it like some minimum amount of years after that the retirement yes they yes 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 the number of hours it has flown right see hours and cycles are considered in aviation okay okay cycles is the number of times the uh, engines are on and off okay take off to touchdown time and the hours is the number of hours it has flown in air yeah so uh, there is a suppose if you have bought a new aircraft mm-hmm. so the company from where you have bought suppose you have bought an airbus or a boeing aircraft that yes. airbus or boeing will inform you about how many hours or how many cycles it can flow you know mm-hmm. and after that depending upon the situation and all Right. it will be retired or it will be life is always into shift duties when you are in aviation morning shift afternoon shift night shift depending upon the company to company okay like in india it is always like morning afternoon and night shift pattern every com- company follows like that morning shift begins from morning 6 to 2 pm mm-hmm. afternoon shift is from 2 pm to 10 pm and night shift is from and somewhere just, around 9:30 9:30 to morning 6 six. Mm-hmm. and uh, every employee experience tough days every day because morning shift is like you are standing on the bay bay you know what is bay no where the aircraft 
comes in parks whenever you fly yeah, yeah, so there it. is a parking area right when the aircraft yes. comes in parks in a so that is called as bay yes. so your life will begin from morning 6 o'clock at the bay till 2 o'clock at the bay running from one bay to another oh. um, arrival and departure hardly you will get a time for breakfast water mm-hmm. or anything oh and uh, and uh, always under the sun mm-hmm. so it is very hectic aviation is not a easy cup of tea not only for women for men also oh. so if you are going to suggest any of your friends regarding it so make them mentally prepared the okay you are going to earn good money but <laughs> i think <laughs> your life is not is easy really important to many people right now i would say because many people don't have this kind of uh, you know they have an outlook that okay it's really uh, nice and a really fashion aircraft it's air hostess oh my god <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what goes behind the, the picture basically exactly that's yes very- exactly we always watch a bollywood movie we always see salman khan shahrukh khan and river we don't know the what what story what happens behind the behind screen the same that. is like with yes. us same is with us uh, everybody finds aviation is a oh ho oh, it's so good flashy nice, and a nice but you no flashy oh it's, right. it's it's very tempting right. but reality is not as easy i'm telling you mon- getting up like in for emirates i was doing 12 hour shift Oh. getting up 4 in the morning every day leaving home at 5 coming back by 7 6 to 6 duty so you have to leave by somewhere around 5 5 or 10 5 10 i used to leave right. come back by 7 o'clock oh. 14 hours you are leaving home what you expect after coming back home okay. then well, at 7 it. you have to cook your food oh. and oh. eat your food and sleep oh, and okay. be ready for the next day. next day so this is how it works aviation is a uh, difficult but i will not scare you people it is very exciting too yeah. it's it's a place to learn a lot it's a place to uh, live up to explore your dreams a explore a lot so uh, i'll not scare you okay it's part of life in every sector it is like that it's not aviation if i talk about my husband if he is an mba person but life is not easy Right. for him also that's true okay. he 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 wakes up late but maybe on calls maybe on mails he's there but for us one thing is good we cannot bring home aircraft so the moment <laughs> we are out we are out means we are out right we uh, we have our own time at home this happens so like this like is uh, good you when you are there you have to give time there right. but when you are out of that uh premises then you are free tension free right you cannot bring when when lockdown happens everybody was working aviation people were not working were not working we cannot bring a craft <laughs> home <That's right. laughs> we were not working we were work actually we can't, can't do the work lockdown from. everybody who had work from home we cannot have work from home we don't have work from home right that's correct so uh, you so know this is the uh, aircraft maintenance engineering to the uh aerospace side and the mechanical side of the engineering into aviation how how is these two different and which has more scope aircraft maintenance engineering also has a, uh, mechanical engineering into it. okay okay aircraft maintenance engineering is divided into two parts mm-hmm. avionics and mechanical and mechanical and and if you will ask me who has a better scope mechanical definitely has a better scope because aircraft is more mechanical Right. more thing mechanical persons do right. but uh suppose um if you talk about I, i i'm just actually with you people i am preferring to talk about very basic right. comparative to the aircraft so that you people will understand very well right. i think software engineering uh, software engineer is not taking care of the computer completely okay they're just taking care of softwares yeah. right a particular part not, of a system correct but uh same is with the aircraft where we have mechanical engineer and avionics engineer avionics engineer is taking care of the electrical instrument and radio systems of the aircraft okay okay means the software of the computer right okay got it and the rest whole aircraft is is dealt with is built with ha is built dealt by this uh, okay. mechanical engineers only okay engines but engine also has a 
um what, what should i say eec which is a uh, computed into it okay so that computer is for the avionics uh-huh. and rest whole engine is mechanical it's mechanical so you can make out with just one example i gave you engine how bigger the scope of mechanical is into the aircraft that's right so me being a computer science student do i have a scope in this field you are a computer science student yeah yes. i am the uh, odd man <laughs> okay you can be into this field the avionics part into it like if but uh, changing into see thing is that uh, aircraft maintenance engineering you have to go through the training portion of it like okay. it is a three year course kind of a two and a half years course mm-hmm. and then uh, you then since you are a computer engineer you can get into avionics part of it choose one stream maybe electrical uh, instrument or radio and then you have to go through that that particular uh, module so uh, you know frankly speaking to you uh, i have been into uh, aviation i could say or i have been really fond of aviation since i was like 11 but i had no clue about aircraft maintenance engineering until less i i knew you and i got to know that there is something completely different license that we have to get different. to in a aircraft. actually So, and, and whole world runs like this i know i mean unbelievably a whole world runs like this right whole i mean since like you know yes so many airlines so right. many right. airlines in the world right and all are maintained all aircraft are maintained by aircraft maintenance engineers like right. and surprisingly no university is having this course as a degree course right no right. university in the world shocking. believe me you will this is really shocking even see when i get into aviation i was like i wanted to get into aviation and uh, since i was preparing for engineering only uh-huh. so i just uh, and those days you know google was okay that was like okay. so we cyber cafe ja ke google karna padta tha you know that level of google right. i had so uh, then i checked out that, that what engineering i can do right and just i get to know about this word and get into it and when i saw the college i was like this is the college because there is no college kind of thing right it's like a institute you know you plus you passed out your 12th with a uniform you have ha huh, i must mention you one more very important thing which came across my mind right now is you have a uniformed life if and you get into aviation aviation that's correct it's not just morning shift afternoon shift night shift you have to be into uniform throughout your life every time like yeah. you cannot wear casuals and go right always had uh, those like, green colors uh, uniform life is <laughs> best you don't have to decide any how to get ready in the morning just morning, wear it 5 o'clock sir. imagine you have to get ready and leave your house that time you don't have to think which t-shirt or which jeans you have to wear correct, correct. you just pick. have to pick up that uniform and, and leave your leave. house that's, that's it you know that's kind of a this plus is, point i would see that's like i also, also a plus point that is a big plus point right uh, see um, i don't know about india india what scenario is there now right. uh, but they used to have a common toolkit which is being used by everyone kind of mm-hmm. but in international airlines every individual have their own toolkit and company pay for their toolkit allowance every month okay. so we have to maintain our tools as per the standards and all tools should be there and they have to check tools every day after work so that everything any anything should not be left over on the aircraft right. because that is considered as fod Yeah. for an object damage that could damage anything into the aircraft so if like, it is left this is, this is something so, completely new for many people so like do you uh, you know have any kind of suggestions or any opinions that you would like to say or you know give that you know that would make us give the opportunity for younger people in high school maybe or in middle school who want to go towards aviation but have no clue about the branches of aviation to get to know more about this uh, See, actually, what happens? The problem with aviation, aircraft maintenance, engineering, it is not a degree course anywhere. Yeah. Very rarely, it is very rarely like maybe DFC, Delhi Flying Club, I know, right. or very few places in the world 
where it is considered as at least a diploma course oh but most of the places it is not even a diploma course so parents don't let their child go for it although if you will if i'll tell you about the salary thing right. then everybody wants to get into like all those parents who are into aviation who are themselves engineers or pilots right. only they will send their kids because they know right Correct. irrespective of degree irrespective of diploma they will always want their kid in either becoming a pilot or an engineer only into uh, coming into aviation correct Up, other than the, other than those no parent will suggest their child to go for a non degree course or a non diploma course correct. so this is a very uh, it's a big drawback actually i must say i don't know why if it is like if it is under a government authority if the papers are conducted by government if the papers are conducted by dgca in india or gca in gulf or uh, fa in uh, america why not it is considered as a, a degree course i have no idea about it why it, why it is like that but so for you your your friends your colleagues your juniors if you would like to suggest this is the first thing you have to inform them that this is not a degree course it is all up to Now, uh, because see, there are so many people who are passing out these exams, but it is not necessary that all are getting jobs into airlines. And right now, scenario is worse. Correct. So now, when you are getting into this course, make sure you do a side by side degree course from some of the other university. Also, maybe a BCom, BA, whatever. Okay. Because at the end of the day, you will have you will end up with two options: one into the uh, aviation, aviation, along with a degree. which you should have yeah. otherwise also it will act as a cushion if just in case you fall down in terms yes, of your career basically um, i would never I, i don't want to misguide anyone but this is the plus and minus point of this aviation mm-hmm. that it is not considered that uh, the study this uh, aircraft maintenance engineering is na- nowhere considered as a degree course okay yeah. you can google it yeah. in and if you get to know if is a degree course anyway do let me know also okay sure okay. because i don't know i never came across any place till now not in india not nowhere uh, 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 anywhere like uh, that it is a degree course or it is all over it is a diploma course and not even diploma course some of in fact from the college i have passed out passed out it was not even a diploma course it was just a certificate which i got but that certificate is valuable in aviation that's correct that's certificate okay. they every airline consider it every yeah. airline value the the because they know it right only they know it right it's just But like the family yeah. parents they won't understand right. they won't understand um i remember you said once that uh, you were one of the first few female engineers in emirates so i want to ask like do you have to like work harder to prove yourself uh as a engineer or in the company or like it was equal uh like um, your- okay uh, let me tell you when i was in india somehow in that company also i was the first female so there i need to prove because firstly i ju- i was just a pass out from a college and in turn as an intern i joined there there never uh, i was the first intern female intern to join i was working for go airlines in delhi base right. so i was the first female intern there mm-hmm. so uh, yes i need to prove because uh, there was never a mindset for a men a men community for a women to work with them in such hard uh, atmosphere it is really a very hard atmosphere like yeah. i told you from morning 6 to afternoon 2 o'clock morning shift you are on the bay under the sun under the rain under the storm everywhere like there were there were there were days when i was completely drenched with water because it was heavy rain there and no shade or where i was under the sun for morning 6 uh, to 2 and lately somehow i got so many female colleagues later on so uh, it uh, it didn't uh, become difficult because gradually the our colleague male colleagues they understood that women are equal as good as they are so they used to give us like we used to handle each aircraft independently without oh. any help so uh, it became diff- easier e- easily like with the time with the time we need to prove 
when i came to emirates so basically in my department uh can we oh no i just wanted to know that has the female to male ratio changed since the time you joined yes yes so it Somehow. has actually decreased or has it increased it has increased it has increased, it has increased a lot in fact in oh, goa airlines good. in go airlines they were like when i joined i was the first one delhi based they were two two or three of them at mumbai base okay so uh ha huh. but delhi base okay. i was the first one and then with me uh, after me maybe around in the tenure of six and a half years 10 to 12 girls came and went or oh. they are still there the nice. few are still there i mean three or four are still there till now That's so uh, ratio has that and 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 i must tell you um anga this is a men's world i'm telling you it's a men's world aviation is a men's world women has such a i mean not aviation i must say engineering is a men's world i understand what you and, mean somehow huh, experience and it is, somehow. you have experienced also you must have experience in your college also i have experienced till now in my life that now now it is okay but earlier it was like um, one out of 500 oh that ratio and when i joined emirates in my department there was only one sri lankan girl before just one who had joined just three or four months before me and then i joined the department one first indian girl and my department was ruled by pakistanis <laughs> so for them it was difficult to digest a woman into their department but yes when you can do when you will work when they understand then they'll treat you yes you are good enough to work then they will never discriminate you but you need to prove yes. this is true Right. for them to change their mindset we need to prove them that yes we can do and once the mindset is changed then you don't have to prove them then they it is their mindset okay ye to kar lengi yeah. that's it right. so so fir uh, usko okay. bar bar prove karne ki zarurat nahi hoti right you have the duty of the whole uh, female community on yourself so that you know the people or the female who wow, that that happened that <laughs> happened <laughs> they they should also get the opportunity to be in this industry yes yes and now when i am out of emirates and now they realizes the importance of mine because you know sometimes women smile and work and they don't uh, show off right. and then later on they when when they are gone then they realize oh shit ye hoti to kar deti right. ab hame ye karna pad raha hai that that's now, a now that value that, that should has happened that should right. have you should always leave that mark yeah. for yeah. everyone that they should uh, feel your uh, absence that's right. that's right if you are not there that who will do it right. so uh, you know you have worked in uh, indian side like indian uh, airlines as well and then you have worked in emirates as well so you know just talking about uh, emirates cuz i think that's uh, let's say and that's like one of the best international airlines and you have worked in that and uh, how do you you know uh, actually say that you know working exp- uh, in emirates and the experience that you gained what was it like uh, completely different or i would say you know what was that one thing that you actually learned in emirates and you couldn't have learned or you did not have gained any kind of experience in that particular thing if you would have worked in some other place of course the infrastructure infrastructure the infrastructure of emirates is fabulous yeah. and and it it gives the best working environment for any employee like um wow how could how should i say that but uh, uh, yes the 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 level of work which i did in india and then i came to emirates and uh, uh, it, it was it, it, it's a huge difference and see suppose uh, a job is there to be done but you don't have the so- resources of it okay. how will you do that it is a very really difficult thing yeah. and and in aviation jugaad utna nahi chalta correct you should have a proper equipment to work on okay. so um, uh, 
so in india suppose if i have to change a logo light logo light you know right the logo light what is the logo light yeah yeah logo light as on, are on the stabilizers of the aircraft right, right. which is very high okay right. so for to reach there you should have a step ladder or a cherry picker or something like that but indian companies doesn't have that big resource and they don't have that resource to reach to that height right. but being a employee we used to manage and keeping safety aside we did we everybody of us we used to work there the difference i find in working in emirates is safety is the first priority work is second okay and then keeping that safety into mind they will make you reach to that higher to higher any location of the aircraft with safety and then will make your uh, the same job very easy because i'm uh, the main thing is the resources they have right. which the other companies doesn't have and the simple task become difficult in other companies because of the resources here in emirates it is fully equipped and they consider an individual like there is a value of human being there is a value of individual person there is uh, so that is why they always consider safety first in india safety was nothing <laughs> uh, seriously just, uh, yeah. i if i think of <laughs> believe me there would have been many instances when i would have died also oh my god and nobody was there to take care of it believe me like i don't i can't tell you the story in this interview but yes. there were some instances where we have reached to that height without anything and if i think of that why did i do that <laughs> now now i think why did how could i do that thing <laughs> keeping safety so such as i we never <laughs> used to have any safety harness we never used to have any cherry picker wo keeping that trestle uh, pulling that heavy trestle with us and then stepping over it on the borders like you know suppose if you uh, you will be asked on fifth floor right. to walk on your railing <laughs> can you do that without any safety thing no, no. no. and how could we do that i really don't know and not only me many of us who were there because we were intern we were like new employees we we have to give our this that shot no complaint and we did because there was no other option to finish that work so we did but here safety is such a priority in an international airline with such a good because a huge difference i'm telling you it's a huge difference Like, you know just do you have any had any kind yes. of health insurance when you are working in emirates yes <laughs> i think that i, I, I was i up. was i was 10 million 10 million dollars imagine oh, insurance of an employee that's too much employee yeah employee the insurance was wasn't there, wasn't there in india no hey yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why i am telling you i don't know how did i work if i think about it i just feel scared oh my god i put my life into like this and uh, happily did that work so now not you... only once 100 times 100 times we did almost every night shift we used to do yeah like that if so, any no, em- no. emirates employee will see what we have done there right, exactly. they will be they will get a heart attack <laughs> they will be like why did you even do that <laughs> without the harness yeah. or anything <laughs> i mean no safety harness we never knew what safety harness is harness is that's correct big difference you cannot compare a domestic airline with an international airline and i just talk about a very small thing just small yeah. example i give so even considering okay. an international airline like air india can you compare it <laughs> So is it like uh, when you uh, like when you enter into this field of repair is it like uh, like on like at first you will just be given an A320 to repair and you cannot work on A380s is it like, is it like that or you can just work on any aircraft when you start to when like when, when you, you uh, start yeah like when you when you are uh, actually entering into this field and when you have the basic license of repairing any aircraft so you get the basic I aircraft. must tell you one thing very good very good question i must say this a this uh, whatever module exams we are talking about here you know right they have the basic knowledge right. and all aircraft irrespective of boeing airbus gulfstream fokker hawk whatever whichever aircraft it is 
which ever company they also manufacture their aircraft with the same basic form- formula right how an aircraft fly right That's each aircraft each ha huh, they right. function same way no the basic thing right. basic thing is same for each aircraft mm-hmm. the only thing changes now is the technology suppose right. if it is a 747 has a different technology use compared to 380 right. of course 380 is a new version aajkal ki generation i must say so so they have more uh, you know uh, software into it right they have more advanced level into it but the basic thing remains the same, same. irrespective of the aircraft uh, all aircraft so, ha- runs on the same basic okay. okay so i think that's that's it for right now uh, these are the questions that we had uh thank you so oh, much mega for joining thank you so much for my pleasure you. really my pleasure it was I pleasure thought. talking to all three of you actually I, it was fun and uh, thank you so much uh, angha and chirag i'll see you guys later in next video as well thank you so much mega ma'am thank you so much for joining bye bye take care you're welcome thank you bye 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 okay so that was mega ma'am for you all Wow, this has been really great, right? Uh, good questions, great answers, and a lot of experiences that she shared with us regarding this field of aircraft maintenance engineering, which is kind of a branch of this aviation itself. That's it from my side today. If you have any questions, write it in the comment section below. And uh, regarding aviation, regarding aircraft maintenance engineering as well, uh, if I'll be able to answer those questions, I'll be really happy to do that. And if not, I'll be asking Megha Ma'am and telling you the answers to your uh, queries and questions that you have as well. So follow me on Instagram follow me on Facebook stay regularly updated there and uh, if you have any doubts do not hesitate any suggestions do not hesitate to write in the comment section below that's it from my side thank you so much guys over and out